Hi everyone, today I will show you how you can add an external oscillator and an external voltage source to your Atmega328 microcontroller after you have finished your Arduino project. Here I have an empty Atmega328 microcontroller with Arduino bootloader and I will connect it to the Arduino board to upload the program. Usually I like to put something underneath it so that it would be easier to remove it from Arduino board afterwards. After plugging Arduino board into your computer, check which COM port it is connected to. Then make sure that it matches the one in your Arduino software. Now I will upload one of Arduino example programs called Blink. All that this program does, it toggles the voltage on pin 13. In my case, I am able to see the result immediately after uploading the program, because I have a pre-installed LED light right on the Arduino board. Now to make your Atmega microcontroller work independently from Arduino board, create the following schematics. If you want to have a look at it, you can pause the video here, but I will explain it more in detail later on. Now let's remove the Atmega microcontroller from Arduino board. I have already created all the necessary wirings, so the last thing that I have to do here is plug in the microcontroller and uh, connect the battery. I will be using 4.5 volts this time. But uh, what I like about this microcontroller is that you can use anything from 1.8 to 5.5 volts as you can find from its dead sheet. Of course you shouldn't uh, forget that uh, the LED light needs at least something around 3 volts to operate. Okay, everything is connected now, and you can see that the LED light is turning on and off. Now, as promised, I will have one more look at the schematics and say a few more words about it. So here is our circuit one more time. I guess you understand why do we need this LED light here and this resistor. But why do we need this other resistor, these capacitors and these extra connections? The truth is that at least in this case our microcontroller would work also without those things. But we need them simply because they help to improve the operation of this microcontroller. For example, uh, it's a good practice connect to connect the reset pin to a certain voltage level so that we will know that uh, the microcontroller won't restart itself unintentionally. These capacitors here, they help to reduce the noise of the clock signal and these connections here we would need in case if we would use the internal analog to digital converters uh, converter that this uh, microcontroller has. Although, as I mentioned before, we could uh, also, at least in some cases, uh, live without those things, I suggest you to always add them, because in that case you don't have to worry about uh, whether or not uh, having them uh, will leave any impact on your project. And I want to mention also that it is a good practice to add an extra capacitor here somewhere close to the microcontroller, because, especially in case if your voltage source is somewhere far away from, from your circuit uh, because that will help to reduce the voltage fluctuations that may occur. So yeah, I guess that I have discussed everything that I wanted today. 
And just in case if you are interested, then here is a video where I am removing all the parts that I said that this microcontroller would work without. So, thank you for watching. If you like this video, then press a thumbs up and good luck with your project.